Hello everyone. Today we're gonna know about so socket programming. You now we have already discussed some of the function calls and and the data types that are used in the socket programming in our last class. So I hope you are familiar with uh, with with those terms. We're gonna use those terms and those you know constructs to you know to develop our server and client program and we're gonna run a test and see how that works so in today's class in today's lecture what we are going to do is we ha I have already created a server program and a client program so we're gonna make a communication happen between client and server using a stream socket and that eventually uses TCP in the background we actually need to confirm that if we create a socket does it really use TCP or not so for that we will be using a network monitoring tool we will be using Wireshark here we will capture a network trace and see what are the protocols that is uh, that this uh, no communication is using in the background so here let me oh, I have these two files on my desktop here now you can see server.c and client.c so let me just open server.c as a quick recapitulate for you guys yeah, so you already know what are the header files we need to include for socket programming and what the code is all about I hope you are familiar with this code now you go through this code and if somebody of you have any problem you can just mention that in my comments or you could just you could just reach me on my email and I'll be happy to help you out in this alright now one of an important call is socket let me just We'll take you to this section just focus on the highlighted section here now socket is the function call or we could say the system call use it to you know create a socket it returns an you know an integer value here that is stored in soc fd so soc fd should be an integer value here we define soc fd as an of type int so this goes uh, like we have discussed also if we, if you could focus here like now the parameters to the socket is like AFI net. AFI net actually is the type integer in here. It is defined in the socket header files, and we all know what it what does it mean. Also, uh, I want you to focus on this part. You know, we are creating a sock stream socket. So sock stream socket is actually you know a connection oriented reliable which you know basically uses TCP in the background we need to confirm this on today's lecture alright so also you can go you know, down in this program and see uh, if you have some of the errors uh, or issues on this we can just we can work on this together and we will resolve that alright so for now I'll be executing you know server program and client program and taking a network trace and see what protocols this is using in the background so I'll be you know opening my terminal so I have this server dot C and client dot C these are the C programming files so the extension would be dot C we need to convert them you know in the we need to actually compile them and then execute them right so I'll be compiling my server file and I think it's in my desktop yes it's in my desktop so let me just go to my desktop so it's here I'll be compiling this server file first using my GCC compiler so every Unix machine nowadays have a GCC compiler inbuilt in in it and for compiling a C file uh, we know what to use we use GCC MISO and then the name of the file whatever you want to keep it uh, let's just keep it AAA and then the name of the file you want to get compiled that is server.c so here the AA the AAA file would be the compiled code of server.c also you could just you know omit this AAA here and if we omit the AAA here there would be a default file a.out which will be containing the compiled version of C since we have to compile two different you know files server.c and client.c we'll be using two separate names to differentiate between the two so I'll be using GCC mice O 
aaa the name we kept and then the name of the file you want to compile that is server.c so let me just compile that it's compiled we are having some warnings here let's just not bother about the warnings for now all right because if a c program has wa warnings it will still get compiled and executed unless we are having you know a logical error in there but i think there's not any logical error and i hope this program will be executed perfectly so i'll be compiling my client program program as well gcc minus o no let's keep its name as bbb and then name of the file client.c all right so this file is also compiled so you can see on the desktop i have aaa and bbb now if you can try open you can open this file aaa open with some editor here leaf bar or some of the yeah here let me just open it so it's like this you know this uh, you cannot understand because it is not in the text text form it is in you know a compiler code of this that is what I want you to show so we have two files here aaa dot and bbb and let's just open our network monitoring tool that would be wireshark all right perfect so wireshark is opening now and we will be you know executing our both the files also i need you to focus like we're using you know the server and the client on the same machine so we will choose only one interface on which we want to capture the traffic no ethernet zero is the interface you know on which my internet is connected and there will be a lot of traffic on this and i will not capture that traffic for now i'll just capture my you know local host traffic because the server and the client programs that i am going to execute would be on the same machine so let's just capture traffic on this interface only all right i've started uh, to capture the net this data out of the network you can see there's no activity in here because we haven't we haven't no execute any any of the programs on my machine till now now we'll, we will be doing that all right so we have wireshark open on this terminal we'll be using some other terminal for executing our programs now let's just confirm if these files are in there yes so I'll be executing AAA first now for executing any file on the Linux we use the command dot slash and then the file name you know you can go through the documentation of these files uh, it is in the you know in the C files itself it's documentation the parameters you have to pass while executing these commands uh, I'll be executing the server file that was AAA was a compiled version of server file server.c and I have to specify some port number on which the connect you know the communication will take place let me just keep it as 5545 five. right so you can see that the this blink on this terminal here means that the server is up and running and it is now waiting for the client request all right so I'll be keeping this terminal as such because I need to execute the client uh, file now if I will execute the client file on this you know the server uh, I need to close this first and then open the ser you know client file the server server will get down in in that case so I have to keep the server up and running and send a request so I'll be using another terminal for my client so that it will not interfere with the server actually the server code that is being being executed in here in this terminal so I'll be using another terminal right I'm on root I think uh, I need to go to desktop now it's there so the name of the client uh, compiled file was BBB I'll be executing this file as dot slash BBB then we have to specify the name of the host the name of my machine is Kali you need to specify the host name of your machine in that case well in my case it is Kali and then the port number uh, no, 
I don't remember the port number what we kept it's four four eight, it's five five four five here right five five four five so first let's just give a wrong port number and see what is it able to handle this uh, you can just see from the code of the server and client that it is capable of handling such errors you know it shows error connecting connection refuse you can also throw a custom error message on this depending upon your coding skills uh, I'll be using the correct port number in here now to see if a connection is established between the two now it's 5545 yes the connection is established and according to the you know the the code that we have written for client and server it says please enter the message in the actual environment this will be like the the request for the server from from the client depending on the type of application we are developing so in this case we are just sending a text message to the server as a type of request and when we are using a in any custom application this has to be the request we want according to our need right so I'll be using any message here to the server let's say hello server right send a message to, to the server and the server responded with the message I was waiting for your message all right and the and then the connection terminated from the client side if I need to establish another connection I need to make another request so for now we just made a connection with the server with a simple message between a uh, simple exchange of messages so for now we don't need this client we don't need server because we already did the com uh, communication part between the two so what we will be doing is we'll be you know analyzing the network trace what we got in there all right so we have some traffic generated in here i'll be maximizing this window stop this network trace all right let me take you through this yeah we're good here we have sufficient amount of data in here i want you to focus on the source and destination since we were you know, using the same machine they it used the local host address that is 127.0.0.1 and that was the reason why it, why we enabled you no know, capturing the traffic only on one interface that was 127.0.0.1 it is the address of the local host and if you remember the type of socket we used was the stream socket and definitely that protocol that has to be here is TCP and it is there so that confirms that the TCP works in the background in such types of sockets all right so the source address is 127.0.0.1 the destination address is the same all right I want you to focus on this you know the port number this is actually the port number it's 5545 you no know, sending for sending messages the client message on the same port and it also uses some other port numbers like 48603 you could see in here 48603 now these port numbers are used by TCP on its own to establish a three-way connect three-way connect you know we could say three-way handshake actually at the start of the connection before actually transmitting the data so this is all the information you can go through the every bit of feed like you know a frame details internet protocol version and you could just maximize these details and see you know for example here header length 20 bytes and all that stuff so this information is here and uh, here and it confirmed that the protocol used here is TCP so uh, also I want you to focus here on one more thing like when we send the message from you know, client to server and the er, server responded back those messages were unencrypted so if we if in any case we will use we are using unencrypted network like we're not using SSL for data encryption before sending it out uh, the data just travels in its original form and if somebody captures the traffic that uh, you know those data those data packets you no know, he could just receive the original information like we did here so we took a network trace we sent some information we exchanged uh, some data between client and server since this was not encrypted we will be having the data in its original form and everybody could just you know if somebody you know mm, monitors your traffic or captures it it's called actually network sniffing so let's just uh, let's 
let me show you here this is the request the highlighted uh, one it's, it was sent by client to the server and you can go through to this part data part maximize it it shows the data this you know this data part 4865 this is actually in the uh, hexadecimal form and if you go down in here you could see the actual message the message is from here you know, hello server I have highlighted the data select part only you know it says hello server and the rest of the uh, rest of the details like this you know this hex code is regarding other field details of you know TCP and this is the data part here hello server so if you are sending unencrypted data it will be visible to everyone if somebody captures it and the server then sends a response to that so here is the response in the same field uh, we could say that let me just minimize this data part all right this is the response sent you know sent by the server i was waiting for your message right so it's important nowadays to use an uh, encrypted network even we can capture encrypted network but there is no way to decrypt this since we don't have access to that key and we don't know, know what keys it used we cannot decrypt that so it's dangerous to use uh, unencrypted networks if the network is shared yeah so i hope you understand uh, how you know socket programming works on client server architecture and what uh, protocol it uses in the background if you use no a socket screen uh, socket sorry if you use a stream socket right and if we, we use the other one we could see, see also see the difference we can capture the network trace and see the difference all right i hope uh, you understood this and if uh, you're having some other questions regarding this mention that in my comment or you could just reach me to on my email i'll be happy to help you out i hope you like this video don't forget to subscribe you have a good day bye bye